Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. Today we're going to look at a brief introduction to drum editing. I was recently contacted by a German thrash metal band called Lunatic Man's Dream. I'll post links in the description below. Uh, but they contacted me to do some drum editing for an up-and-coming EP, and I thought this would be a good time to take a look at the process of drum editing just to give you a quick overview and give you some tips and tricks to help get you started. Let's take a look at the tracks. Okay, we've got the project opened up, and as you can see, we've got 22 tracks uh, for the drums that were sent. Um, I want to keep this fairly brief, so as I said before, this is not going to be a full in-depth tutorial, but just to give you an idea of how to get started. Uh, I want to take a look first at the snare tracks, and I'm zooming in on those. I've highlighted the three tracks by holding control and clicking the first, and then control clicking the subsequent tracks. And essentially what I want to make sure of is that they are lined up with each other. With multi-miked instruments, it's virtually impossible for the sound to hit all the mics at the same time. So you have to make sure that certain elements are grouped. Like I want to make sure that my snare tracks are lined up. Either they line these up before sending the tracks to me or he just did an incredibly good job of miking them. But those look good. I want to do the same thing with the kicks. And those look good as well. So since everything seems to be lined up well enough, uh, the first thing that I'll do after that, and you, may be, you can see there's a split here. So I want to take this first half and just highlight all of the tracks by right-clicking and dragging a box around them. And then I'm pressing the letter G on my keyboard to group them. That way, what I do to one of these items affects the group. There is a grouping icon in your toolbar by default, and you'll want to make sure that grouping is enabled, and also this option to select the entire group from selecting one item is toggled on. I suppose before we get into any editing, we should listen to a little bit of this just to give you an idea of what we're working with. I'll pick a random section of the song here and just play it with the guitar. The guitar that's on this is not the final guitar, it's just MIDI that they used for reference. So here's a little bit of the song. And while this performance is not bad at all, if we try to line it up to a click, you'll start to hear some discrepancies in there. And once again, the, the performance is not bad, but it can stand to be tightened up. Uh, this particular style of music, you usually want things to be very tight. So now that I've got things grouped, I think what I would like to do uh, as a starter is, I know that we've got the intro here that we could work with, but I want to start here at this main riff just because it's something that I feel like I can look at quickly and get some progress made on. I like to focus on the basic beat to start. There's going to be lots of tom fills and cymbal work and intricate things in this performance, but at the end of the day, your basic beat is what's going to stand out and what's going to glue the song together. So I'll grab one of my kick tracks and the snare top, and with these two highlighted, I'm holding Control and Shift on my keyboard and rolling the mouse wheel up to zoom in a bit. There is an option that I like to have enabled that is adding a crossfade when an item is split, and to get to that, you'll go to Options and Preferences. Let's see, Media Item Defaults, there is an option for overlap and crossfade items when splitting. I've got a toolbar icon that I made to be able to turn that on and off, but you can do it in your preferences and just check mark that for this, and I'll show you why I do that. Uh, also, be sure to turn off snapping because you want to make sure that you have the freedom to move these items at will. So if we take a look at this first kick here, we can see that it is not on the downbeat of one in that main riff. So what I'll do is move my playhead before that kick, highlight the drum tracks, and since we've got our grouping enabled, it's grabbing all of them, and I'll press the letter S on my keyboard to split. That's added a split with a crossfade there, and now if I hold Alt on my keyboard, you can see the icon changes here on the media item, and I can drag this now this is not affecting anything before the split, but it is obviously affecting everything after. But I'm going to drag that and just sit it here to where that kick definitely happens on the downbeat of one. Now since that has moved everything after it, of course, we've created a bit of a problem, and now we're going to have to fix everything downstream. Looking at this and just having a little bit of familiarity with the song at this point, I know that this next kick should come on the upbeat of two. So I'll do the same process again right here before that 
uh, that next kick, I will press the letter S to split, which splits all of my tracks. I'll scroll down to, to demonstrate that, but you can see everything is split in line here. And now I will hold Alt and drag once again to move that kick to make sure that it's lined up on the upbeat of 2. And my snare should come on the downbeat of 3. So the same process again, I'll move my play cursor. I'm moving my play cursor by middle clicking. Uh, you, can, you can either left click somewhere up here on the ruler if you'd like, but since I'm already down here on the items, I find that just middle clicking where I want the playhead to be works fine. Press the letter S once again to add the split, and I'll hold Alt to drag and make sure that that snare lines up. These next couple of kicks look fine. This snare is just a little bit late. Now, I do want to say that there's a lot of different ways that people edit drums. Some people like to chop up every single beat and make sure that it's 100% grid aligned. And while that works, I find that it gives a bit of a robotic performance. I prefer to do it this way because it still preserves a good bit of the drummer's original playing style. It just helps to tighten it up a little bit. It's more of a gentle nudge than it is a complete replacement. So we've got our snare lined up there. That kick is pretty close. We'll follow the same procedure we've been doing to get that next kick lined up. And one thing I haven't mentioned is these crossfades that we're adding. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see. As I move this waveform, you can see that once it goes past that crossfade, it kind of disappears. Uh, what that's for is to where we can seamlessly blend the preceding track into this part that we've slip edited. Now sometimes you'll find that you get some errors and you'll need to move the crossfade just to make sure that the correct part of each waveform is shown. And you can move this by moving your mouse over the crossfade and holding shift. You can see the icon has changed on screen. And by shift clicking and dragging, I can move this crossfade to expose more to the left or right of the fade. And since everything is grouped, uh, you can see that the crossfades below and above are following. Generally speaking, you want to get your crossfade as close as possible to the next item, and you'll want to go back and listen to make sure that you don't have glitches, but if you do have glitches, that's generally how you fix it, is by moving the crossfade. Let's do a little bit more editing here and see if we can get this lined up. Now this next section here, I'm not quite sure how it's supposed to be. My assumption is that that snare needs to be on, on the uh, beat 3, but let's take a listen. <laughs> I think that should be on the three. We can test it by doing a split just before that and slip editing our snare into place and seeing how that sounds. That sounds, sounds about right. That last snare beat should be on the upbeat of four. And just for reference, as I'm giving these numbers, three, four, and, and so forth, I'm looking at the ruler up here. I've tried to zoom in to where I can see um, eighth notes, basically. So that's beat three. That's the, that's the downbeat of beat three. 12.3.5 is the upbeat of measure 12 beat three is what I'm looking at there. So here at measure 13 beat one, I'm going to add a split just before this and slide this kick into place. And you can see we've got a little bit of a glitch there, so we'll need to shift and move our crossfade to get rid of that. And I realize this is very brief, but that's the basics for how you will do your drum editing. I'm going to go ahead and finish editing this, and we'll fast forward to the end to where you can hear a bit of a finished product. Back in a few minutes. All right, we've got our drums all edited and ready to go. I saved a copy of the project before completing the editing just so you can take a listen to the before and compare it to the after. Let's take a listen to the refrain in the song and then compare that to the finished product. So here's our before. As you can hear, there's a good bit of push and pull in there. It, to me, it felt like the drummer probably couldn't hear the click in the reference quite well enough and maybe was second guessing himself. The playing is in time with itself, but it has a tendency to defy the click in parts. And here we've got the after. I'll play that same section. 
Now it's important to note that this is not mixed, it's just been edited and just a basic amount of balance just to where I can hear what I need to hear. So here is that same section after editing. So as you can hear, it's in time a lot better, but it still preserves that human element. If you'll note in the ruler here, I've made a couple of markers for spaces that I want to go back and fine tune a little bit later. Let's take a listen to a bit more of the song and see what it all sounds like in context. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to drum editing in Reaper. If you'd like to see more content, be sure to comment down below, particularly if you've got some ideas for some other tutorials you'd like to see. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support me, you can do so by clicking the link below to buy me a coffee. I like coffee.